Hello everyone, Jeff and Jay here with another edition of Jay's Big Adventure, Jay's the Fuzzy Guy. And today we're reviewing our 1972 MG, MGB. MG started making cars in 1949 with the MG TD. And uh, it was right after the war, it was pretty primitive, very fun to drive. But by 1955, they needed something different and they introduced the MGA. Very swoopy bodywork, very pretty car. Not very sophisticated mechanically, but it was gorgeous. Uh, it looked a lot like the Jaguar XK series at the time. But that car only lasted about four or five years and they realized that they needed to bring something else out and started working on this car, the MGB, in 1958. It first came out in 1962 and was produced pretty consistently up until 1980. If you can tell from MG's numbering or lettering system, <laughs> the next car in the lineup was the MGC. But today we're gonna work on this car, which is a 1972 MGB. The thing that brings most people to old British cars is they're just gorgeous. You know, the lines, the proportions, the simplicity are just absolutely wonderful and this is a really good example. This is a 1972 and MGBs came in a couple of different major formats. They all look the same on the outside but there were some changes um, that are significant. One of the biggest ones is that this car has real wire knockoff wheels. That is a single nut. You tighten it with a wrench that's almost three feet long the lug nuts are different side to side. So one side is actually left hand thread, one is right hand thread, you gotta watch that. It clearly shows which way Titan is on the knob. <laughs> so uh, if you ever get confused, just take a look. But the wire wheels are a big difference. The other big difference is the chrome bumper. So this is a chrome bumper car. The later ones, I think 75, um, they went to the big rubber baby buggy bumper bumpers and there's this big, black mess on the front of the car and added a lot of weight I mean, it did affect the handling and uh, just not as aesthetically pleasing as these early cars today i've got the tonneau cover on and um, this does a really good job of keeping you warm in chilly weather it was 37 degrees this morning and with the heater going there's some dash vents right right smack in the middle of the dash that kind of fills this area, hi Jay, with warm air and uh, it's actually pretty comfortable. Um, absolutely classic British interior, some Smith's gauges. Um, I've added this period correct wooden steering wheel. It's a little bit smaller diameter, gives me a little more room between my thigh and the, uh, the center console, but super slick four speed gearbox. And it's just a blast to drive. And um, you've got these little vent windows. You know, if it's a little a little warm and you've got the top up, you can open those vent windows and get a bunch more airflow. Really fun, fun little car. The engines in these cars are pretty much all the same. Came a couple of different variations, but they're all based on the same 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. Uh, this is pretty rudimentary. It, uh, it's not overhead cam, it's uh, a cast iron head, and it's not a cross flow cylinder head. Cross flow heads, the intakes are on one side, the exhaust is on the other, and that gives significantly better airflow. Uh, BMW 2002s of the same era had that and fuel injection and overhead cam and aluminum cylinder head. <laughs> so even when this came out, it was uh, pretty antiquated, but it's super easy to work on. And if you're looking to get into you know, the collector car market or an enthusiast car, and you're not very skilled mechanically, these are really easy to work on. You know, plugs are right here, distributors right down here. You know, here's your heater control valve. Uh, this car has been updated with a modern alternator so it can take more of an electrical load. They're pretty simple. You know, it, they're not they're not hard to work on. You can remove the engine transmission um, pretty simply. And uh, it's a great car to get your feet wet if you want to learn more about how cars work. Um, 
this is a 72. They started off with uh, nine, com nine to one compression. I think this one is eight to one. And the later cars, the r rubber baby buggy bumper cars, <laughs> um, after 1974 when the emission controls started, um, those cars, the power dropped from 95 horsepower all the way down to 70. And even though this is only 2,000 pounds, that's a significant difference in power. Um, with the additional weight of the bracing for the bumpers, and later cars do not perform as well as the earlier ones, so keep that in mind. Um, one other huge difference is that these cars came both with 6-volt systems, 12-volt systems, and negative ground or positive ground, you have to watch before you start working on these cars. This car is a negative ground 12-volt car, and those are the ones that you want. So this particular car, checks all the boxes. It's a chrome bumper, it's wire wheels with the knockoffs, and a negative ground system. So those are the things that you need to look for if you decide you want to go uh, searching for a car like this. Um, but enough talking, let's go drive this in the mountains and see how it performs there. So what is it that makes these cars so much fun to drive? It's certainly not fast. <laughs> it may run 15 seconds, <laughs> 0 to 60. I don't know, this one may be 20. <laughs> but it's just a blast. There is something about a light car that we just don't have in today's vehicles. There's just, there's so much extra weight and so much extra garbage. And man, when you got a car that is light and nimble, and this road is perfect for this car. We're going you know, 40, you know, 45 miles an hour. Um, this is just like the you know the B roads are in Europe. And it's not about going fast. It's about having fun. And I tell you what, I've driven hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars. This is one of the best gear shifts of any car I've ever driven, period. It is super direct. There is no slop in the linkage. I mean, if you grew up on a front wheel drive, <laughs> you just won't believe how positive this gear lever is. It's, it, it there's, uh-oh. There's no question. Hmm. Just kind of shut off of me there. I was doing it again. It just died on me. I have no idea why. I smell something. We're gonna open the hood and see what's going on. <clears throat> we'll be right back. <laughs> We're stuck on the side of the road. I'm not quite sure why it died. It runs. It catches for just a second and then quits again. <laughs> Guess it's time to call for help. Welcome to the joys of British car ownership. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> so we are stuck on the side of the road in Big Cottonwood Canyon. Um, I've got a buddy coming with some tools and a test light. Uh, there's fuel uh, certainly getting to the carbs. It does, uh, it, when it died, it just stopped and then started again. So pretty sure it's electrical. It could be a coil, it could be distributor caps, something, something simple. But anyway, he's headed this direction with uh, a treble light. <laughs> So 
so we got the car running again. Uh, it looks like the coil wire just kind of pulled out of the coil. Um, that will definitely do it. There's quite a bit of traffic, so we're going to wait for a little bit of an open spot and then pull out and see if we can get the show back on the road. I mean, this is the fun <laughs> of old cars, you know, <laughs> every drive is an adventure. I uh, <laughs> was not expecting it to be like this, but you know, <laughs> that's part of, old, of owning an old car. You got to be able to do a little bit of troubleshooting, figure out what was going on, and we're back on the road again. <laughs> okay, where were we? 20 minutes ago. Oh, yes. Seeing how much fun the car is to drive. It does help when it runs, but uh, you know, there is a combination of you know, manual steering, manual brakes, a really, really precise gear shift that's just a joy. And you don't have to go fast. We're going, you know, 35 miles an hour <laughs> okay, in third gear. And it's just a hoot what this car was made for you know little teeny back roads and uh, beautiful days like today it's it's chilly up here um, it's probably in the upper 30s um, <laughs> I'll have to show you but I actually have my heated jacket on from my motorcycle <laughs> made a little adapter so I can plug it into the uh, cigarette lighter and I tell you with this tunnel cover I'm I'm warm and uh, it's just beautiful and here comes the Sun be able to see this in just a moment. This is just a beautiful canyon. I love driving this canyon on the motorcycle as well. With the sun out, it's probably going to go up 15 degrees. Man, is this a beautiful day. The right car, the right road. Man, uh, this is what this is all about, you know. It's, uh, you know, the, the Triumph guys and the MG guys say, I would rather drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And uh, this is exactly what they mean. Um, ooh, 40, 45 miles an hour, 48 miles an hour. And, uh, it's quite entertaining, you know. The way the car responds to your controls is a big part of this. And what I like is that it goes exactly where you want it to. It's it's direct. You know, there's no power steering, no power brakes. You know, the manual transmission. Man, this is involvement. That's what makes it fun. You know, I. I use the golf gun analogy. You know, if you could buy a golf gun that would make a hole in one every time you pull the trigger, it'd be fun for about five minutes, <laughs> right? And and then it get old. You know, it's like uh, there's no challenge. I mean, yeah, you wrote the check, but there's no challenge in driving a car that's easy. There's no challenge of golf if you can just make a hole in one every time you pull the trigger. You know, this thing. The way it, the carburation, we've really got that dialed in. It, the way it runs at this altitude is just wonderful. It's not fast. Not fast by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but it sure is a good time. And this, I think, is what the Miata did for the automotive world is it brought back the joys of driving a small light car the Miatas don't break very often you know, they're they're really really reliable and and it opened up this sort of joy to people that don't have any mechanical skills and and that's a big deal uh, to be able to 
get out and go for a drive and know that the car is going to get you back um, is important for some folks. You know, for us, it's kind of half the fun. Uh, I was looking at a 86 Volvo 240 that had 500,000 miles on it. <laughs> It's in Nashville, Tennessee. I live in Salt Lake City. It was 1500 bucks. I was going to fly to Tennessee and try to drive that car home. <laughs> they sold it before I could get out there, but you know, that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, the, uh, the art of being able to do that sort of drive um, is something that's lost on a lot of people, but I was just going to bring the minimum amount of tools and uh, go for it you know you know 1500 bucks on a cheap flight you know <laughs> if it blows up you know I'll push it off the side of the road take the plates off of it <laughs> you know or you know, take it to a local junkyard and get 300 bucks for it and uh, you know get a bus ticket home <laughs> right you know, would have been great fun anyway um, that's kind of what I was looking for uh, and that is a different kind of automotive enjoyment. I mean, for some people, the last freaking thing in the world they want is to have some car that's not going to be reliable. And, and while I don't relish it, I don't mind it. Getting a car that is uh, like this one, that, that wasn't right. Um, it ran, but it wasn't right. And to get it and to make it right and to have it run well, gosh, it's just so much fun. And that's what I'm hoping is going to happen to this car, is I want someone to buy it that will take care of it and enjoy it like I have. You know, do the paintwork, uh, make it nice, nice, and, uh, and go from there. Ooh, my ears are getting cold. <laughs> it's, the temperature's dropping. It's, it's below freezing. <laughs> my ears are getting chilly. But uh, even so, it's a good time. So that's really what this is all about, is finding the right road and just enjoying the enjoying the car you know it doesn't have to be fast it is the way that car responds that makes it special and here's a tip guys if you're looking for a car to buy as an investment potential buy something like this okay I've been right on early M cars air-cooled 911s, NSXs. Um, I've capitalized on a bunch of these. You know, I just sold my uh, 2003 M3, bought it for 14.4 three years ago, put 30,000 miles on it, and got 21.9 for it, because I knew that car had hit bottom. These have hit bottom. <laughs> They're not getting any cheaper. Nice ones are going to be hard to find. And the problem is, once you get to a certain level, the cars get cheap enough where idiots can buy them and start hacking them up. And to find an original car with all the original parts that runs well, that's tough. And this particular car has a rebuilt engine and transmission, so it drives like it did when it was new. That's a big deal. So this car that you can drive for years and get your money back, that's pretty compelling. So that's why I suggest, um, you know, hey, buy this one, it's for sale. But find one, hang on to it. And, uh, you know, a fun car is a good time. A fun car that's free? <laughs> Whole different ballgame. So that's what we're looking for. All right. So that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe. We'll have more adventures soon.